Hi, I'm Yvonne Hocken, the Raven, um, and I live at Woodlands Villa in Fielding. Um, Collison's was my home. I now reside at Woodlands again when I came here once for a girls' reunion for school. Since leaving school, I have been a ballet dancing teacher. I now judge and um, write for the adjudicators. I have done budgeting, becoming the regional representative for New Zealand. Our brownies, guides, all those sorts of things that involve with children and have lots and lots of travel of many parts of the world that fortunately I've seen possibly won't any of us see ever again. School memories, lots of them, uh, getting into trouble probably quite a bit. Um, throwing chalk at the teacher when she threw it back at me, so I threw it back to her. Um, what else is there to say? Just great years. My children went to that school too, the boys, and loved it. And so, well done, Fielding Agricultural High School. I know you're high school now, but me, it's Agricultural High School. Love to all the friends out there, and bye. Um, congratulations, Fielding High School, on 100 years. Carla Haronga here, um, was Head of Arts, 99 through to 2020, uh, taught theatre, uh, a little bit of English at the start. My um, greatest memories of Fielding High School is probably watching the arts grow over that time. Um, it was really exciting to watch that growth from teaching in um, B Block is where I started, where we'd clear the desks away to do some um, theatre teaching. Um, to the end where we had the team teaching room that a lot of you will remember as that transformed into this amazing black box theatre. So here I am in the black box theatre in Abu Dhabi where I currently teach, um, thinking of you all back there as you celebrate and um, remembering Fielding High School with a very fond heart and the many, many students that uh, travelled through our theatre doors and out the other side and just another great memory is just the enjoyment of watching those students absolutely grow and blossom and still seeing them today enjoying and thriving in the arts community. Have an awesome centenary Fielding High School. Hi everyone, I'm Steph Dickens and I went to Fielding High School from 2008 to 2012. I have so many awesome memories from school but the ones that definitely stand out were the athletics and swimming sport days. They were just so much fun dressing up with your house and yeah, doing chants and just having lots of fun. I also just um, really remember how supportive everyone was to get out there and give it a go, try any sports. There was so many sports available and I feel like I tried most of them, which was really awesome. I'm currently up in Auckland working as a physio part-time and then training with the New Zealand Black Sticks women's team part-time as well. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Bye. Kia ora and konnichiwa. This is Dennis Tate here from Ohope Beach in the Bay of Plenty. Uh, congratulations to all of you on the 100th anniversary of the establishment of Fielding High School. I was a student there from 1964 to 1968 and I taught there for almost 20 years from the year 2000 to 2019, teaching Japanese and junior English. I lived in Japan previously. I lived in Japan for 22 years and came back to New Zealand in 1997. Some of my favorite moments of Fielding High School were spent with my students, of course, uh, taking seven trips to Japan for three weeks at a time and seeing the students grow so tremendously during that time and find excitement in learning the language. Other exciting moments of Fielding High School were always the athletic sports where I was on the timekeeping team and really enjoyed that time with both students and staff. Congratulations to all of you. We are looking forward to um, catching up with some of you in due course. Loving retirement at this beautiful part of New Zealand. Greetings to all past and present students and staff. What a shame the centennial celebrations have had to be cancelled for a second time. Living with COVID has impacted on many of us. I remember my five years as a student at Fielding Agricultural High School with fondness, and I clearly remember the 50th commemoration celebrations in 1971. 
to return as the school's principal in 1997 was indeed an honour. It is great to see the school thriving in its second century. Fielding High School has an enviable, enviable reputation and long may it last. It's like a fine red wine. Congratulations on reaching 101 years young. Kia toa, kia nako nui. Hi, this is Catherine and Chris Blaine. We went to Fielding Ag from the mid 70s to very early 80s. I was a McGregor at the time and uh, my dad was a school teacher there. We got married in 1986 and in 1997 we came out over to the Arabian Gulf and started our uh, overseas um, sojourn here in Bahrain. Did a, a loop around through various other countries and we've ended up back here for the last five years. And I'll hand you over to Chris now. Hey guys, how you doing? Um, kia ora, pihi Kia rana and assalamu alaikum. You'll see this fort behind us is the Rafah Fort. It's one of the forts that uh, one of the emirs was born in uh, fairly recently. Um, he was he he um he passed away a few years back. But Bahrain's a pretty amazing place. It was actually settled by the Portuguese too. There are Portuguese forts um, all around the area of Bahrain. It's a very small country, and uh, it's um. It's, it, was, it struck its oil in about the 1930s and a Kiwi by the name of Major Frank Burns actually struck oil over here. He was the guy that discovered it. So it's got quite a, a connection with Kiwis over here. I'm a health, safety and environment specialist over here with the BMP project, which is Bahrain Petroleum Company. We've been working out here and shifted to all different parts of the Arabian Gulf and Pakistan. Sorry, that's a bus in the background. Um, so I've been working over here in a health, safety and environment role for quite a few years and really enjoy it. Um, we just want to wish you all the very best uh, for the reunion. I know a lot of us can't be together because of the COVID issue. Uh, I can assure you, you're in a pretty good spot where you are. 1,400 plus people have died over here. So to have, what, 60 people pass away in New Zealand, you're in a pretty special place of safety. So all the very best. And to all of those people that remember fielding ag, Loved my days at AG, played a bit of rugby, mainly volleyball, a bit of basketball. Wasn't very good at any of them, but enjoyed it. Um, just all the very best, and uh, God bless you guys. And uh, we're going to just wave goodbye. And that's the call to prayer in the background. Bye, guys. Kia ora, ko Sarah Hidani Toko Ingoa. I went to Fielding High School in 2006 through to 2010. I'm currently playing for the Blackfin Sevens and based up in Papamore. Uh, favourite memories from school were, would definitely have to be um, being at the hostel and which allowed me to play as much sport as I could. Uh, Kia ora, I'm Sheree Hodgkinson, previously Sheree Muir. Um, and firstly, I just want to congratulate Fielding Agricultural High School as we knew you on commemorating 100 years um, young. Um, I attended high school as a student from 1984 as a Form 3 um, student to 1988 as a Form 7 student. Um, and then actually, again, in as a teacher in two, from 2004 to 2014 before I moved down to Sunny Nelson. Um, one of my memories... One of my memories definitely that stuck with me is um, probably a couple of teachers. Miss um, Scott, uh, for her um, unbelievable staunchness, um, but I was probably scared of her, to be fair, but I learned so much from her, and I have a huge amount of respect for um, the way she was as a teacher, in fact. Um, and Mr. Darman, um, a completely different personality, um, certainly not scary, but definitely a, a strong uh, presence in the classroom. I recall Mr. Darman saying um, frequently, you know, come on students, use your brain matter. Um, and uh, that's something probably I've said a few times now too as a teacher. Um, I have heaps of uh, wonderful memories as a student and also as a teacher when I returned um, 
to teach from, like I say, 2004 to 14. Um, and I made some amazing connections with um, lots of amazing teachers and uh, learned so much along the way myself as well. So hi to everybody who uh, is currently there and hi to everybody who was there previously when I was there. Um, all the best. I am Ron Turrell and I attended FAHS as a boarder from 1951 to 1953. However, here are some of my experiences as farm manager at the Nakanui farm. In 1957, I received a letter from Mr. McKinnon offering me the position of farm manager of Nakanui, the dairy farm at FAHS, which I was delighted to accept. I have often wondered if I would be around for the school's 100th. Congratulations on reaching this milestone. Here are some of my memories as the farm manager. It's like the day, there was a day I found a small boy with Flo, the horse, reversed into her stable. The boy, wondering how to get the horse to put her head through the collar to harness her into the cart. I only wish I had a camera handy to capture some of the humorous side of life, teaching the boys some aspect of farming. Because while I was away on a break, the boys on the piggery duty were having a rat hunt. They poured petrol down the drain pipe, which took wastewater across the road into a drain. They then lit a match to it, thinking the rats would run into the drain. They didn't. The rats ran through the burning petrol and up into the dry store, straw in the loft setting it alight. A boy then had to run down to the school for the fire brigade, but he waited into the classroom window, not wanting to interrupt the teacher. The teacher asking what he wanted, he blurted out, the piggery is on fire. Fortunately, the office was next door and the fire brigade contacted. The fire was extinguished with only one building damaged, and it gave a practical and it gave a practical lesson for the fifth form boys on repairing damaged buildings. No health and safety things in those days. A highlight was when we took a number of pedigree shorthorns to the Royal Show at Hastings, along with three boys, and came away with top prize for champion heifer and reserve champion yearling bull. At Palmerston North the following week, the winning was reversed, the heifer getting reserve champion and the bull getting champion. The boss was very proud of them as assembly heard next day. Bailing hay with the old stationary baler was another trial as it was during the holidays. The competition was to who could put through the greatest number of bales in a given time. The bales were all hand tied with twine, all dust and sore fingers. A crop of oats which had been stacked at Manawa Nui Farm ready for thrashing with the stationary threshing mill. There were more Californian thistles than oats at times. At the end of each day, it was a job getting the thistles out of your fingers. We did get leather gloves for the rest of the crop. Then there were, was the unexpected fencing lessons. Mr. Branny, he was a school tater, caretaker, and one Saturday morning he had a gang of boys replacing a concrete strainer opposite the old bee block. These were the days when all posts and strainers were in concrete. The subsoil around the school was ironstone. Once you got through the topsoil, the ironstone was mixed with round rocks, so when you dug a hole for a strainer, it was crowbar bashing all, most of the way down. The boys had a large hole to put the strainer in, so to, to keep it from lifting, Mr. Branny poured some concrete into the bottom to stop the trainer, strainer from lifting. Next week, the number eight wires were all strats, 
strained very tight with a good stay. With a good frost a few days later, there was a broken strainer hanging on by its reinforcing to a large block of concrete, waiting to be dug out with even a larger hole. Lesson, don't strain the wires too tight. Earlier when I was a boarder, the milking machine was GVB. They were referred to as God's very best by the boys, but the real name was Gordon Vacuum Break. However, when I returned a few years later, there was a new milking machine, ideal. I don't know if it milked the cows any better. At least there was one improvement, with the separator now having an electric motor. The previous one had to be wound up to speed by hand and kept going until the vat was empty. The less said the better when it came to killing the sheep for the kitchen, let alone the cutting up. I don't think it was just the cook's fault that the hoggart was usually fairly tough. I leave that to your imagination. I enjoyed the second period, second experience I had at the school and the help and advice given to me from Mr McKinnon and the school staff. After two years, I left the school farm to go share milking.